About 10 or 15 years ago, there used to be this one Burger King place just outside of Silver Lake out here in California. It was situated just within walking distance of this giant pet supply store that was only too happy to let their customers bring their dogs, cats, chinchillas, or whatever else with them while they did their shopping. But unfortunately for me, the close proximity of these two places meant that many people would often try to have their pets accompany them for a burger and although I'm assuming that the management frowned on that, they didn't really do all that much to curb that sort of behavior either. I'm pretty sure it broke all kinds of food safety regulations, but I suppose to them, business was business and they couldn't really afford to turn every single pet owner away if the place wanted to stay afloat. So on the day in question, I had stopped at the restaurant for what I hoped would be a quick bite to eat before a job interview. It wasn't the smart choice, I'll admit. It certainly wouldn't be prudent of me to turn up to an interview smelling like french fry grease. But to be entirely honest, the smell from outside the restaurant had me practically salivating. Those fries, man. Something about those Burger King fries is just insanely good. Maybe it's the seasoning or the oil. Who knows? Point is, I couldn't resist a quick Whopper and fries. But incredibly, the moment that I walked through the front door, I recoiled. Hit by a debilitating wave of nausea due to the thick, pungent stench of wet dog filled my nostrils. It was almost enough to make me turn around and walk out again. But I decided since that I'd already made it this far, I should at least still get something to eat. It was that or risk feeling hungry, grumpy, and tired during the interview. My first mistake was peering around the place in the hopes of finding out where the smell originated from. Through this, I ended up locking eyes with a very heavy woman sitting smack bang in the middle of the floor plan, who was alternating between dropping ice cubes down various parts of her clothing and pouring large amounts of water directly onto the floor. She shot me a glare as if to say, like, what are you looking at? So I broke eye contact and walked right past her, my glances being much more subtle as I did so and I challenged anyone not to have done the same thing. You can't not look at that stuff like it's like a car crash or something. Gopping is just sort of in our nature. Anyways, these water puddles were being noisily lapped up by an equally obese dog of ambiguous breed that looked as though it had been recently trying to make love with a freaking mud puddle. My second big mistake was loudly mentioning the unpleasant aroma to the girl who took my order. Although she expressed sympathy, telling me that the manager had already been informed, my complaint was overheard by the clearly crazy woman who was watering the foul-smelling hound. What you say about my dog? She barked out, sounding like she had a cement mixer in her throat in lieu of actual vocal cords. When I didn't respond, the woman shouted again. Hey, hey, I'm talking to you, boy. You got a problem with my dog, huh? Uh, not in particular. He just doesn't smell too good is all. I said. Whoever said honesty is the best policy was a liar. You got a problem with the way I look after my canine? Before I could think of an appropriate response to de-escalate the situation, the woman hurled half her full cup at me, completely drenching my freshly laundered suit. Not only that, it Turned out that she hadn't been sharing water with her dog, but actually some kind of clear soda. So picture the scene. I'm now covered in the sweet-smelling, sugary liquid the dog had been drinking, the same dog that now detects the outwardly negative energy being projected by the woman. Only when it rears up and begins to bark at me do I realize just how big that thing was. Turns out I had been extremely foolish to assume that all that body mass was just fat and blubber, because underneath all the fluff was just pure muscle and fury. That, and I was covered in soda, like I might as well have been in with Joe Exotic's tigers whilst covered in sardine oil. It was like a cross between a Saint Bernard and a pit bull, and like the saying goes, it really had taken on its owner's personality. It was mean, incredibly mean, and when it barred its yellowing teeth to growl at me and drool dripped from the corners of its mouth onto the floor below, I realized something. Dogs are killers. 
we might like to pretend they're not, that they're cuddly little doggos or borkers or whatever dumb name that the internet has given them that particular week, but they're not. They're barely domesticated. And given the opportunity, as many of these police camera action videos show, some dogs are just waiting for the chance to mess a person up. And that's exactly what this dog wanted to do to me. The fat lady only barely had him under control. The devil dog was straining so hard against its old frayed leash that I'm pretty sure I could hear the cordage beginning to stretch to breaking point in between this thing's mammoth monstrous barks. She was screaming at me that she could just sick him on me and that I'd be a fine lesson for a rude person like myself not to talk smack about people in public like that. I'm not ashamed to admit that I was absolutely terrified. I mean, to the point that I almost completely forgot that I had a job interview in the first place. It was just pure survival mode all of a sudden, and before I knew it, I was behind the counter in the Burger King workstation begging the girl on duty to call the cops, animal control, anyone who could remedy the situation. Anyone else, some gangbanger or whatever, I might not have been half as scared. Sure, I might have gotten a punch of something for my indiscretion, but this woman was literally crazy, and you could just tell from the look in her eyes. Some cholo might just knock my teeth out and walk away, but this lady, I had absolutely no doubt that she was more than willing to let that animal rip me to shreds right there on the floor of a freaking Burger King. Once it was clear the cops had been called and I had made some half threat about getting her dog put down, which was just that, there are no bad dogs, just bad owners, the woman left the Burger King and the staff began to clean up the mess she made. I wound up having to rush away for a change of clothes before I could make it to my interview, which I barely arrived at on time thanks to that little incident. I was just lucky I had a spare suit jacket at home, which looked slightly odd paired with the pants I was wearing at the time. Gray suit jacket, black pants. But it was better than nothing. Oh, and for those interested, I did actually get the job, but I never, ever went to that branch of Burger King ever again. Way back in the 90s, when I was a broke college student up in New York State, I worked at a burger joint one summer in Ithaca. I don't want to outwardly say the name of the place, but let's just say it's remarkably similar to Burger Monarch. The other staff were pretty cool. They were mostly young college-age kids like myself, and I actually still keep in touch with a few of them since we became pretty good friends. Hard work like that builds crazy strong bonds. But the manager was something else entirely. If there were corners to cut, he'd cut them. And if he could save a few cents on new stock by recycling old stuff, he would. I mean, to the point it kind of felt like we ran the restaurant and just sort of tried to stop him from messing the entire operation up, just so we could keep getting our paychecks. But I'll name no names to protect the innocent, and now that I'm safe from being sued, on with the story. The sanitation in this particular Burger King was very questionable indeed. I mean, I've been to Burger King since with my kids, and it's a whole new ball game. Cleaning stations everywhere, all the staff have gloves, the place is gleaming. But this, my Burger King, was a world away from the kind of place you see nowadays. While there were timers built into the refrigerators to symbolize that we were supposed to throw patties away after being prepped for two hours or more, these were much just decorations for the health inspectors. Anyways, I get a free burger and fries during my break. It was one of the few perks of actually working there. That and the free parking that I abused from time to time so I could go hang out at the nearby mall. I normally go for your bare bones basic cheeseburger since it was almost always fresh and used minimal ingredients and thus the least likely to kill me. But I decided to go for another kind of burger one day because ranch dressing on onion rings together on one burger fulfilled a long-held protein dream I'd had. Anyway, so I throw a patty onto the grill for a few minutes, take it off, and take a few bites, only to realize something was wriggling in the burger bun. Yep, you read that right. And on closer inspection, it seemed like the whole hunk of bread was moving. Between the gooey, saucy cheese and buns were 
Half a dozen or so little white larvae who were wriggling rather anxiously at having just been thrown onto a sizzling hot beef patty from their safe cool home on the burger bun. Management always left the doors open in the summertime, front and back, as the place could get unbearably hot, and apparently that invited fruit flies that laid eggs on the burger buns. After gagging, spitting, and trying not to contemplate what was potentially wriggling down my esophagus, I showed the wormy buns to my boss, who claimed it was just sesame seeds, and then yelled at me for throwing the buns away. It was a long time before I ate a burger in that place again. Although what was almost as disturbing to me is that, at roughly the same time, some drunk Cornell fat dude got a wormy bun and came to the counter. We realized what was happening and prepared ourselves for some kind of sustained assault ending in a lawsuit, but the guy just straight up ordered another burger. Another one. People are gross. I work at a local Burger King in my city in Ohio. A few nights ago, I was working the closing shift, which is 5 p.m. until 10 p.m. It's a shorter shift, but it's the heaviest one of the day. And not just because it's busy, because all the weirdos seem to come out after the sun goes down. And this right here is the story of the most bizarrely disturbing encounter I've ever had while working in that Ohio Burger King. So, it must have been only like half an hour until closing... And round about this time, the throngs of late-night diners start to kind of peter out, allowing us to close a few booths and generally get a head start on clean-down before actually closing. The restaurant is getting quieter and quieter, and as time goes on, it actually seems like we might be able to get out of that place at a reasonable hour, which obviously we're all excited about. You see, we didn't get any overtime there and they'd only pay us for 15 minutes after closing. The idea being to keep us from slacking and earning a few extra bucks in the makeup work after hours. So as I was saying, it's about half an hour from closing when I see a guy start walking towards the clear glass doors. They're double doors too, so picture the scene as he opens one door, uses the little hook to keep it open, then does the same with the other door so that both sets of doors are wide open, like he's ready for an entire mob of people to start walking through the entrance. But instead of an entire mob of people, there came only one, although I'm guessing she weighed about as much as three or four other people. This woman was in a mobility scooter, or more accurately, spilling out from over a mobility scooter. I really don't mean to be cruel here, but she was disgusting, objectively disgusting, she couldn't have weighed any pound less than 600, and her size was such that she actually needed an oxygen tank attached to her scooter, a clear plastic line running from it up into her nostrils. She scoots her way to the counter with her man and proceeds to just smile at him while he orders something for her. Something being the single biggest order I'd ever taken down in the entire time I've worked there, and I'm talking even more than the frat boys who come in drunk one Saturday night. The order came to just shy of 150 bucks and took about 20 minutes to prepare. Keep in mind that the average serving time in our restaurant at that period was like 6 minutes. 6 minutes for an entire bag of meals and this order took 20 with every member of our staff preparing it. When it was done, the worst part commenced. She scooted herself over to a table with her man who then proceeded to feed her pretty much the entire order in the space of about 10 minutes. It was absolutely disgusting. But honestly, I couldn't decide if it was worse that we were bearing witness to that whole thing, or that the guy seemed to take immense pleasure in making a freaking mess while he was feeding her. By the time they left, there were fries and ranch dressing everywhere, all over the floor, all down the red leather in the booth. Tons of fries have been, like, crushed underfoot in that way that you have to really scrub at the plastic tiling to get them up. The whole thing added a bunch of extra time to our cleanup. But that's not the thing that scared me. It's how into the whole feeding thing they were. How the woman was hurtling towards an early grave and seemed 
seem to be loving it. So, I think I can answer this one, given that I used to work at Burger King as a shift manager while I was still attending night school. Our store was located in the large Walmart shopping center. Every single store in that whole shopping center really hated being next to the Walmart because the general manager happened to be particularly mean and spiteful. So for example, there was a problem reported in a store, an employee complaining about staff facilities being busted, he would just fire the employees who reported the issue instead of actually fixing the problem like a grown-up. And said problem usually went unfixed until it turned into an emergency, like when the septic tank backed up or whatever caused that sewage stench in the parking lot for like a week straight. If that seemed like a very specific example, it should do. It was beyond disgusting. As a result of our anger and the subsequent chewing outs he got from us, he couldn't fire us, and our manager hated them even more than we did. Every year he would express his ire for the fast food restaurants next to him by plowing the snow in his parking lot into the large piles that blocked the entrances to our parking lots. Yep, he was that kind of guy. Anyway, three months later and it's almost summertime. This is all right in the middle of a hectic lunch rush when basically our entire parking lot was full. And whenever that occurred, people would just park at the far end of the Walmart parking lot and wander over to us. And that day, we just so happened to be told by multiple customers that there was a growing fire ant nest in one of the flowery garden-type islands in the Walmart parking lot. We advised people to be careful, even putting up signs in addition to calling our general manager a few times, asking him to get an exterminator. He explained that we just didn't have the funds to hire professional exterminators but he'd call up head office as soon as possible. Only they really had the power to allocate that kind of funding. He sympathized, but there was simply nothing he could do right away. It was frustrating, but that's the way things are sometimes. So a few days later, a woman and three children come in during the lunch rush. The mom is nice and polite. Kids are incredibly cute, and she orders one large meal for her, three kids' meals for the little tykes, and then... They all walk out. Interaction over, right? Wrong. It must have been no more than like ten minutes later the woman walks back into the restaurant. I recognize her immediately from having been so nice. That's the thing in the service industry. Sometimes I think I'd rather just have nice customers than idiots who tip. Only this time, she's not looking so happy and content. In fact, she looks visibly distressed. My first thought was that an order had been gotten wrong. Maybe one of those adorable little kids is upset that they didn't get their preferred toy or something, but the more I looked, the more it was obvious that she wasn't just distressed. She looked downright terrified. By the time I noticed that she was actually crying, I just walked out from behind the counter and gave her a polite, May I help you, ma'am? She tries to speak, but she can't. She's just kind of sobbing uncontrollably in that kind of trying to keep it together but failing kind of way. I tell her everything is fine just to take a breath and she does. It works. She can talk again. But what I heard next made me kind of wish she hadn't. My son, he... Ants. Fire ants. Oh God, please. Help. Please help. My jaw just about drops. The worst I'd ever envisioned was an irritable grown-up with a few bites threatening to sue us into oblivion. But a kid? I ran, straight up sprinted as fast as I could manage towards the Walmart parking island. Immediately I see the kids. Two of them are perched atop the hood of the car the mom had obviously been driving, while the boy is jumping around erratically, screaming in pain with tears streaking down his little face. His legs... I'll never forget his poor little legs. They were almost completely covered in tiny orange and black fire ants. I mean, even from a distance, you could see them scuttling up and down his legs, which were already covered in these little red sore-looking bites. My first thought is to use the hose out back of the restaurant to spray the kid's legs. Side note, I'd had the exact same thing happen to my cousin when we were kids, and I remember my dad literally saving her butt by spraying her down with the power hose. 
She cried like a banshee, but it worked. That's also about the time I realized a huge problem with my idea. If this had happened closer to the store, I could have used a hose to spray them off his legs. But if you remember, this is a Walmart parking lot, where they'd used a free space before walking over to the Burger King. So there was absolutely no way I was going to be able to get them over there, not fast enough. I was absolutely terrified. I had to think quick. All I could think about was that kid in Texas who died of fire ant bites just a few years before. I mean, I'm pretty sure he just died of a few bites too, and this kid in the parking lot looked like he had hundreds. Then I saw their drinks, sitting on the hood of the car in one of those cardboard carrier things. I grabbed them, starting with the mom's large lemonade, and sloshed them with as much force as I could muster onto the front of his legs to wash off as many ants as possible. Next... The two small kids drink straight to the backs and side of the legs. 99% of the fire ants are washed off. The kid is still screaming. But after I clear the rest off with my gloved hand, the initial emergency is over. I tell the mom to bring the kid back to Burger King so I can use the first aid kit on him. She scoops him up, still screaming, her crying, while the other two kids follow close behind. I bring her in through the delivery entrance then rush into the office to grab the first aid kit. She rubs burn cream on his legs while I call 911. Ambulance arrives within five minutes. Kid is not screaming anymore, but still crying. Paramedics take over. The mother gives me a hug and thanks me between tears for helping them. 24 hours later, I learned that the Walmart manager had been sued by a local family for dangerous conditions at a store. The manager was fired and replaced with an interim manager. Exterminators showed up within a week and fire ants were killed. All's well that ends well, right? But still, it was definitely the scariest moments of my entire Burger King career, which, funnily enough, ended not long after. So a few days after my 19th birthday... A few of my buddies and I are rolling around town in one of our cars, passing bottles and generally getting up to no good. We find a spot to park up, have a few smokes and blast some music, hanging out and just messing around until long after the sunset. Eventually, once we get hungry enough, we decided to drive over to Burger King to get a bite to eat. Now, I'm pretty lit by that point, and I've been lying if I said I wasn't generally being a complete jerk here, but... Here goes. So the Burger King drive through is closed for some reason. So we park the car up, get out, and head into the restaurant. And at the head of this huge line was this giant ham beast who was in the middle of waving her arm flab around, making some animated complaint about her order. My drunk buddies and I proceeded to watch this ham beast making an absolute idiot out of herself for like 10 minutes straight holding up the entire line until eventually she steps to the side to wait for her corrected order or whatever. Either way, the line starts to move again. Everyone is super livid at this hog lady for holding up the line, and I could tell the workers behind the counter were less than pleased with her too. So by the time I get to the front to give my order, I'm feeling all cocky and righteous, and for some reason I had it in my head that if I made the workers laugh by roasting the hog lady... I'd get like a free meal out of it or something. So I say something to the effect of, May I apologize on behalf of humanity for the irate snuffling of my heavy friend here? No one laughs. They all just look pretty shocked, looking back and forth between the ham beast and myself, waiting for the aftermath. She turns red in the face and I expect her to explode on me. I'm ready for the black eye or whatever. It was worth it, just to hear my buddies cracking up behind me. But she didn't flip her lid. She didn't say a word. She just sort of stood there, steaming mad until the guy behind the counter appeared with her amended food order. Then she just sits down and starts eating her food. We get our food and sit down on the opposite side of the restaurant, and all the while my buddies are like, Come on, man, you burned her. Jeez, dude. But I'm looking over at her, because the ham beast is on her phone, just talking all quiet, but every so often she shoots us 
a little bit of a look with this big, smug grin on her fat face. I don't know what I was expecting to happen, but why I thought I'd get away with it, I have no idea. Because the moment we walked out of that restaurant, we just hear from behind us, There he is. That one, right there. I look around, and she's pointing at me, the same smug grin on her face. Then when I turn back, there's a gun in my face. I honestly can't remember what the dude was screaming at me, only that he was, but I know it was her husband. It's weird the little details you notice when something like that happens to you. I distinctly remember seeing the dude's wedding ring on a finger that was wrapped around the handle of a pistol. I'm not a gun guy, but that thing was an incredibly big pistol. Like huge. And all I did was sort of zone out and look down the barrel for a few moments with this guy's screams ringing in my ears. It was only when he pushed it to my forehead that reality came back to me and hit me like a ton of bricks. I just remember shaking so hard that when the guy told me to get down on my knees, I could barely react. He screamed at me to get on my knees because I didn't deserve to die on my feet, and that line stuck with me even to this day. I've never been so scared in my entire life. If you notice, I haven't given my name or where this happened or when it happened. This is to give me enough anonymity to admit that just after I fell to my knees, and I mean fell to my knees, I just straight urinated my pants, which I didn't even know was really a thing. I mean, obviously I've heard about people being so scared they wet themselves, but I didn't think it could actually happen to people. But I suppose since I was full of booze and that large coke, there was plenty in my bladder to void. And void my bladder I did. Somehow, I had found a way to make a terrible situation even worse. Not only did I think I was about to die in a parking lot, while a whole restaurant full of strangers looked on in horror, I was about to die soaked in my own urine, cowering and shaking, on my knees outside of a freaking Burger King. He starts shouting other stuff at this point too, but I can't quite remember that either. I was just waiting for the moment my light switched off, a feeling like I'd fallen asleep real fast that I'd never, ever wake up from. I remember trying to shout something myself, something about how will someone please call the cops or whatever, but fear is a powerful thing. I couldn't speak. I mean, it was like a nightmare come to life. One of those where you try to scream for help, but your voice just sort of dries up in your throat. The next thing I remember are my ears pricking up to the word cops being spoken by some bystander just out of my view. Then I hear the distinct voice of the ham beast repeating the word, only this time, it's not me that sounds scared, it's her. I feel the tip of the pistol leave the back of my head, and by the time I summon the courage to look around again, I see the pair of them, ham beast and gun guy, screeching out of the parking lot in some battered old sedan, followed swiftly by the blaring sirens in the distance. It was only when I was giving my statement to the cops that I noticed my buddies were gone, and not only were they completely out of sight, so was the car. So I had to be driven home to my parents' house in a freaking cop car, which clued them into the fact that I had been drinking, which to them was far more worthy of their attention to the fact I'd almost just been shot in a Burger King parking lot. They tried to ground me for like a month, but they didn't need to enforce it. I was too shaken up to leave the house for the first week entirely. Just be careful who you're talking to or trying to be funny. You never know who's psycho enough to put a gun to your head. This story of mine comes from perhaps the worst period of my entire life so far. I grew up privileged. Summers in the Hamptons and winters in the Bahamas kind of privileged. My dad was an investment banker, and a good one at that. So much so that mom never had to work after they got married. I had it all. Fancy private schooling led into what I thought would be a free college education. Well, not exactly free since dad was footing the bill, but... I'd never be saddled with any kind of crippling student debt that would turn my peers into wage slaves for the rest of their lives. At least, 
That's what I thought was going to happen. Until the 2008 financial crash. A lot of other financial companies got government bailouts right out of the taxpayer's pocket, but my dad's didn't. For whatever reason, they didn't qualify, so he lost his job. Long story short, one day I was in college, living the good life. The next I was on the phone to my mom, being told I'd have to drop out and find a job if I ever wanted to be able to support myself, as they just didn't have the spare cash anymore. It was devastating. I'd never worked a day in my life before, and there I was, traipsing around town with a folder full of resumes, trying to find something, anything, to get some cash in my account. And that's how I ended up working at Burger King. It was really hard at first. Although I didn't necessarily feel like it, I obviously gave off some major rich girl vibes as the rough, tough, working class staff members detected it immediately. They didn't go easy on me, not in the slightest. But if I'm honest, that's the best thing that could have happened to me. In the space of about three months, I learned the meaning of a hard day's work, and the more I threw myself into the challenge of full-time work, the more my colleagues started to respect and appreciate me. In the end, we were incredibly tight, and I still keep in touch with a few of them via Facebook and stuff, but anyway, now they have a bit of background, on with the story. So I was working the late shift one night, which is generally the hardest shift of the day, the manager only ever put the most competent, most capable workers on that shift, and I know it sounds dumb, but the fact that I'd proven myself enough to be put on that cycle was a huge compliment to me. We used to stay open until midnight on weekends, and at about 11.30, we get this pretty regular looking dude coming in, standing there at the counter whilst perusing the menu behind me. I gave it my best. May I take your order, sir? He looks down at me. Without skipping a beat, he's like, two double cheeseburgers, please. I could have plugged the order into the register when he interrupts me with an addendum into his order. Could I have those without the bun, the bacon, or any cheese, and hold off on grilling them for me, would you? Thanks. I stopped plugging his order in and looked up at him. Excuse me? It took a moment for me to really process what he was asking for and he smiled as he began to clarify what his order was. Is there a problem? Uh, yeah. I'm not sure we're allowed to serve raw hamburgers. It's against food safety regulations. You've heard of steak tartare, haven't you? Yet another guy who immediately detected something in my mannerisms or accent that suggested I was upper class. I didn't even justify it with a response. I just asked him to wait a second while I talk to my supervisor. So the supervisor comes out and basically tells the guy no, just like I had. Even if you can eat raw beef, it's just not something we're able to serve our customers, or that's what I thought anyway. Because as my super is talking to this guy, calmly explaining that as much as he's sorry, it's just not something we can do. The guy like rolls his eyes and pulls out a wad of high denomination bills from his pocket and is just like, how much would it take? Now the place is pretty much empty at this point, but all eyes are on this guy and his wad of bills. I'll never forget the moment my supervisor stopped talking all calm and professional before turning to me and telling me, go to the back and clean something. I was stunned. I knew the guy well enough to know exactly what he was doing. He was going to clear the floor of potential witnesses, then actually get this guy's order. I pretended to clean something, all the while spying on him as he collected two raw patties from the fridge and sort of went through the motions of cooking them, so that if anyone watched the camera's back, it would look like he had done his job to the letter. A couple of minutes later, he comes into the back, telling me to take over the register but not before he slides a few crisp hundred dollar bills into my hand, telling me not to say a word to anyone and to just forget about what had happened before people start running their mouths about it. As far as the rest of the team knew, he had told the guy no, served him some regular burgers, then simply gone about the rest of his shift as normal. But I couldn't let it go. I had to get some closure, even if I had a few hundred bucks worth of tips, I had to know what this guy's deal was. So being the sly fox that I am, 
I ducked my supervisor and hit up the manager in his office, asking him if, since it's so quiet, it would be okay if I took a cigarette break. He looks at me all confused, turning in his chair before saying, like, You don't smoke, do you? Uh, yeah, I just started. Stresses of the job. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but if you're entitled to your five minutes, just make sure you get your station covered. So I did. I got a buddy of mine to man the register, bummed the smoke off of one of the fire guys, then stood out back trying to get a look at the guy as he headed for his car. So there's me, standing there, pretending to smoke while I pretend I'm not watching this dude climbing into his driver's side. Then the thought hits me. It's late. Stores might not be open. In fact, they definitely weren't open, and the dude probably wanted something to cook with, right? Wrong. I distinctly see him unwrap the dripping wet burger wrapper before he raised the raw meat to his face. He doesn't take a bite, not like I expected him to. In fact, it looks more like he's smelling the meat more than anything else. I really couldn't believe what I was seeing. Literally, though, I thought the perspective had me seeing something that I wasn't, so I made the awful decision to edge a little closer to the car, angling out so I could see through the driver's side window. All without considering that his side mirror would reveal me as the peeper that I was. And oh my god. The way he looked at me through that window. This wild look in his eyes after breaking from what looked so much like he was making out with that chunk of meat. He was furious. Gunning his engine before ripping out of the parking lot as fast as he could move. I just tossed the cigarette. Ran back inside and went straight to the super to tell him what I'd seen. He only repeated that no matter what, I wasn't to tell a soul that we'd served him raw meat, or those few hundred dollar bills would be the last money we ever got out of this place if the owner didn't opt to sue us too. We never saw that guy ever again, and no one ever found out about the raw meat we sold him. I don't suppose I was in any real danger, but it was definitely the scariest, if not the most disturbing incident I've ever had while working at Burger King. I think maybe the scariest thing to ever happen to me occurred in a Burger King of all places. I was on a particularly long drive one time and it was later in the evening when I started to get kind of hungry. I kept driving for a few miles until I began to see signs of a Burger King. Hallelujah. Fatty, meaty goodness. I find the Burger King, pull off the highway, and park up my car just outside. So as I'm walking over to the actual restaurant, I was pretty happy to see that there was no line. Not only that, but there didn't seem to be anyone inside the restaurant at all. It was as quiet as the grave in there, but frankly, that suited me fine. I was famished by that point, so naturally I was in no mood to be stood in some long line. I remember seeing the clerk stood behind her register... Just stood there, almost in a robotic way, not moving. But again, I didn't overthink it. I figured since they weren't busy, she could afford to just kind of take it easy. I step inside, walk up to the counter, and then freeze. Now since this is not my first retelling of this, many people have asked me how I didn't notice the warning signs. Seemingly empty restaurant, server, frozen to the spot, stuff like that. Like I said, it was late in the evening. I had had a long day and I was starving. My situational awareness was not at its best and everyone looking at this with hindsight can go screw themselves because I doubt they're the Sherlock Holmes they think they are. Anyway, I get up to the counter, look at the server, and see she's been crying. Not only that, but she's shaking too. She seems absolutely terrified. Then, out of the corner of my eye... I see something under one of the tables nearby. It only takes a slight turn of my head to recognize what it is. It was a person, lying face down, their fingers linked around the back of their head. And they seemed similarly terrified too, too scared to even look up from this prone position. Only then did I realize that something was horribly, horribly wrong. I just didn't know what. But thankfully, or not thankfully, I didn't have to wait long to find out. 
From the back of the store, a guy in a mask steps out from behind a fryer or something. A grubby looking gun in his hand, and it's pointed at me. Phone, wallet, and keys on the counter. Now. I can't remember his exact words, but they were essentially that. He ordered me to empty my pockets, and when I did, he ordered me, down on the floor, just like the other dude, I instinctively linked my fingers behind my head. I had apparently interrupted him in the process of emptying the cash registers, or rather, commanding the poor terrified server to do so for him, which she did. I didn't see much of what happened next, but I know he told her to put the money in a food bag so he could walk out without too much suspicion being raised, or that's what the logic seemed to be to me. Before he left, he told us all to count to 100 before we got up, and if anyone did, he'd shoot us through the giant glass windows that pretty much made up most walls. As you can guess, I didn't get up, not until I heard him screech out of the parking lot in a car. My car. Needless to say, that was quite the messy situation to follow up with for many months after. I've been pretty heavily involved in various fast food jobs since I was old enough to work and I am now a manager at a Burger King down here in Florida. We experience a fair share of problems on a daily basis, but the worst has to be people who are using or addicted to drugs. They're everywhere in our industry. I mean it. The fun never stops for fast food workers. I have seen deals in the back of the kitchen, in the parking lot, in the bathroom, or walk-in. It used to be worse before my time, apparently, but honestly, I find that pretty hard to believe. My boyfriend of 10 years, who is way higher up the management chain than me, told me in the old days they would all hang out in employee parking even if it wasn't their shift and just everyone would constantly switch cars while doing various substances. The first week I became a deputy manager, I had to cuss an employee out when she came in to work high on crystal. Not about her coming in on meth, for not doing any work. My boyfriend also tells me he came in and worked in the kitchen for a bit when it wasn't even his shift because he was rolling. Lastly, to this day, 90% of the employees come in with eyes redder than Satan's wiener. I used to be one of them, but a higher up singled me out and now I don't do it despite them. This is most fast food places, but nothing can prepare you for walking into a bathroom to do a routine check and seeing a person's leg sticking out from under the stall. I remember being super tired that day. Just one of those shifts you're just trying to make it through instead of actually putting in any real work. I lazily grabbed the cleaning supplies from the cleaning closet, wandered into the woman's bathroom with my pen in hand, ready to sign my initials on the sheet to show we were being diligent and all that stuff. I straight up dropped the pen when I saw that girl's leg sticking out from under the stall, then ran. I mean, ran back to the manager's office to call the paramedics. They kept asking if the girl was still breathing, and I had no idea. It wasn't a cordless phone, so I had to grab another team member to get them to check for me. They did not take it well. I don't think they'd ever seen another person on the verge of death like that, lips turning blue and stuff, and I had to send them home early when all was said and done. I don't really blame her either. It was a horrifying thing to behold. The paramedics showed up and luckily this was at a time when the use of Narcan was becoming increasingly prevalent. For those that don't know, Narcan is a nasal spray that can reverse the effects of an opioid overdose. So luckily for us, and the girl in question, no one died that day. But the thing that sticks with me is the look I saw in that girl's eyes when we opened up the stall so the medics could get to her. I had to like shimmy up the bathroom stall before jumping down careful not to land on her so I could unlock the stall door. The medics wanted to kick it in, but it was quicker and much less expensive for me to just climb over. But when I did, I kid you not, the wide-eyed look of fear in that girl's eyes, the cold sweat clinging to her brow as she crept further and further towards death's door, I had never been so creeped out in my entire life.
I think my most disturbing story regarding fast food work would be working at a Burger King in my native North Dakota. I happened to be the go-to guy for any kind of job the others didn't want. I was in high school at the time and usually worked around 25 hours a week to earn money to fund my extracurricular activities. I cooked, cleaned, washed trays, and served from time to time. But most of all, I was essentially a magnet for odd things. In the two years they were open prior to me starting, they didn't have drainage issues, fecal issues, vomiting, or anything else like that. But lucky me, when I started my first day consisted of cleaning projectile vomit from the kitchen. One of the cooks took ill during his shift and barfed everywhere, and I mean everywhere. But still, we remained opened and kept all of our tickets under our 10 minute max. Fast forward a few weeks and our soda slash ice storage drain under the fridge stopped working. We had to move the fridge and clean out the drain. The drain was full of a gelatinous brown stuff that smelt like raw sewage. A few nights later, some kid had explosive diarrhea all over our dining area. He somehow managed to hit three tables, around a dozen chairs, and about 80 square feet of wood flooring. Shockingly, we stayed opened and I was forced to clean in between exposing food. Another good one was when our GM found we had a rat problem in one of the walk-in fridge units. The restaurant was closing for a few weeks due to it being our slow season, like smack bang in the middle of one of those brutal Dakota winters. One of the super smart shift supervisors decided to just close the door with the rats inside. Whether or not he'd seen them, I don't know, but when I came back to open the kitchen to find about 30 dead babies and a mother rat, this was bad enough on its own seeing all those twisted up babies dead with their mother nearby. But when I came to donning the gloves and picking up their little bodies one by one and tossing them into a plastic trash bag, it turned out one of them wasn't as dead as they appeared to be. The moment I laid a hand around the mother rat, she woke up. I have no idea how she wasn't dead. I mean, she mustn't have had any food or water for a while, unless she had somehow found a way, but... Alive she was, and she was angry. She somehow managed to escape my grip, but she didn't drop to the floor. Instead, she sunk her teeth into my hand before she started working her way up my arm, biting me viciously the entire way. I was screaming, trying to smack her off of me, but every time I seemed to hit her, she had her teeth buried in my flesh, and smacking her only succeeded in making the wounds even worse as her teeth ripped and tore at my skin. In the end... I managed to catch her with a shot that knocked her off and sent her crashing into the fridge wall next to me. Then, I stomped and stomped over and over again until she wasn't moving anymore, and her broken body was spilling guts out onto the floor. I had to have 19 stitches in my hand and arm along with the tetanus shot, and I was stuck in a hospital for 72 hours due to waiting out my shift before going in. So this story doesn't have anything to do with Burger King food as such, as the restaurant I happened to be working in at the time was very sanitary. I used to eat Burger King burgers and fries on my breaks, as I never encountered anything gross happening in the entire time I worked there. Then again, I usually worked the morning or day shift, and the people seemed to be much cleaner and more diligent than the afternoon or the night crew. Offense intended night crew. Y'all are nasty. On one of my last days of work, something extremely messed up happened. At the time this whole incident happened, I had put in my two weeks notice because I got a different, nicer, thankfully, job. And by the end of that day, I felt even luckier that I'd managed to land a much more pleasant job. You see, a young woman brought her two children with her to the store. Not an unusual thing, and although I didn't serve them, I was around the registers when the mom placed her order. Absolutely nothing seemed amiss with her or her kids, and trust me, you get really good at reading people when you work service. Body language, posture, stuff like that you learn to read, and you can almost tell if someone is about to be a jerk or whatever. Anyway, on the day in question, a large group of senior citizens from a local retirement home were there as well. It was a weekly thing, and we came to get to know some of the older folks who came into the restaurant. 
So one of these sweet old ladies walks up to the counter and tells the shift supervisor that one of the bathroom stall doors was locked. She knocked on the door numerous times, thinking it might have been one of her retirement home friends, but got no response. She told us she was pretty worried and asked if a member of the team could go into the bathroom to make sure everything was okay. Our general manager immediately jumps into action, got in there and used the special kind of key we had to open up the bathroom stall from the outside. The mood was kind of tense when she walked in, but the entire restaurant went into a panic when she rushed out, shouting for someone to call 911. We later found out that she had unlocked the stall, only to find the young mom of two lying on the bathroom floor, turning purple, with an empty bottle of bleach next to her with the cap off. She had tried to take her own life, right there in the bathroom, with her two young kids playing just a few yards away. And this was the worst part. These children were like three or four years old, tops. I don't think they'd ever get over it if their mom died like that, right there, with them. When all was said and done, all the employees on that shift were in tears or just numb from what had happened. And the paramedics and police came and there was a huge commotion. Everyone thought she was dead. However, the paramedics were fortunately able to revive her. I'd like to believe it was an adrenaline shot through the heart, Pulp Fiction style, but I honestly have no idea how they got her back. And she was sent to the hospital. Needless to say, I was over the moon that I didn't have to work in that place anymore. Even if I wasn't on the way out, I'd have definitely left after that anyway. A wild thing happened to my girlfriend and I at Burger King a couple of weeks ago. We ordered a bunch of food, got our drinks, and sat down at a table near the corner of the restaurant. A minute after we ordered, a guy goes up to the counter and orders. He wasn't out of place, so I didn't notice anything about him for a few minutes. He sits down where you typically would sit if you were waiting for a to-go order, and the first thing that got our attention was a kid, maybe eight or nine years old, ran past him. He loudly says, Atheist! at the kid in an accusing tone. He then was milling about, talking in a radio-like box about how he needed to move to the North Pole. It was seconds after this that I noticed that he was staring at us. As I made brief eye contact with him several times to check that he was indeed staring, he then walked over and sat at a table right next to my girlfriend and I. Great, I thought. He then starts babbling to some imaginary person saying, I don't know, I don't know. Homeless and mentally ill are common in this area, especially this side of town, so we are on edge but not surprised at his behavior. The lady working calls for Order 179. The guy says, They were before me, motioning to us, since he apparently forgot his number. The lady said, Two cheeseburgers. And he again insisted it might be our food. By this time I realized what was happening, and I said, Oh yeah, we are 178. At this point, he snapped and totally lost it on me. You Californians need to learn to open your mouths! As he grabbed his food and began walking in my direction to the exit, I mustered up what fight-or-flight response I had in the moment to say, Have a nice day. See ya. As he approached the door, and crazy guy continues to cuss at me, calling me names. A few words were exchanged, but I made sure to stand my ground but not say anything off-color as he made his way out. As he left, he apparently continued to scream at us through the window. All employees and customers in that place were looking at me in shock, and I was shocked too. The part that bothers me about this interaction is that in the moment, as he walked past me, I saw in his eyes how removed from reality he was, whether that be because of drugs or mental illness or a combination of both. He was also much larger than me, so if he wanted to hurt me or my girlfriend, he likely could have. Needless to say, every time I go to that Burger King from now on, I make sure I scope out the area before going in. I'd say I was about 13 years old when this happened. At the time, I lived in a small town and this girl a few years younger than me had gone missing. It had been a big deal. They found her body and, well... Apparently she had been tortured before dying. It had been a huge deal. 
They found her body, and apparently she had been tortured before. It was a huge deal, and obviously it made my parents paranoid about who they let be around their children. So back to my experience, my mom took me to Burger King. It was close to our apartment, and we went there the day she was too tired from working to cook. She went to get the food, and I sat at a booth playing with the paper from my straw, and this man came in and came up to me. It was like he came into the building and looked around until he spotted me, then came over to where I was sitting. The guy I don't think that he was homeless. Maybe he was. He had this odd smell to him, and his clothes were ripped and dirty. He kept his hands stuffed in his jean pockets and kept moving them around and swaying back and forth while standing and looking down at me, and he kept smiling. It was so creepy. I just sort of smiled at him and said hi and hoped he'd go away and figured he couldn't do anything because it was a small building full of employees and my mom was just a few feet away. Note, my mom didn't notice this guy yet. He started talking to me and I remember that he had that kind of voice that makes you feel gross. He just stared at me and was talking about the girl who went missing. It wasn't like a casual topic. He had this glint in his eye that it was exciting to him what had happened and excited for him to be talking about it to a young girl. He had started on about what he had heard and what had happened to the girl, which when you're very young and some creepy man who hasn't bathed in probably weeks is saying things about this to you, and the way he said these words was so intense and freaky. Like the whole situation is messed up and I was creeped out and this guy was standing very close to me, like blocking my side of the booth. It was like he knew that if he didn't stand nearly pressed to my side that I would get up and leave this charming conversation. Thankfully, before he could go into any more details at this point, my mom noticed him and came over asking what he wanted and why he was talking to me. He got wide-eyed, jumped away, and left. A few employees ran out after him to see who he was, what he looked like, because they were caught between wanting to call the cops and making sure to never let him into the building again. I remember being shaken up really badly. My mom was freaked out. She had plans on buying me mace and all sorts of things after that incident. The thing is that after that, I was paranoid I'd run into him again. Small town kind of stuff like that happens. Like a few times I swear I saw him riding a bike when I'd be in the car with my mom, and another time I think I saw him in a shop we were in. Of course, I was young, and he was gross, and I was paranoid, so I doubt I did really see him. But thank God, I never had to interact with him again. This story is from a little over 10 years ago, so I was either 9 or 10. My dad would take us in his 18-wheeler across the eastern United States, mostly so he didn't have to unload the truck because he was incredibly lazy. Anyway, I went with him one summer, and we stopped at a Burger King to eat. I forget where it was, but it was either in Kentucky, Virginia, or West Virginia. I nearly got hit in the parking lot by some idiot, which was bad enough, but the really creepy stuff went down once we were inside. I ordered a kid's meal with a Dr. Pepper. The cashier was this weird redneck-looking dude. I remember taking a sip of my drink a little after sitting down, and it tasting kind of weird, I had a mouthful of food at the time, so I didn't pay much attention to it. Now, ordinarily, I would chug anything caffeinated and carbonated, but for some reason, something told me not to this time. After I finished eating, I took another sip. It definitely was not Dr. Pepper. I told my dad that it didn't taste like it, and he tasted, replied, it's not, then went and yelled at the creepy-looking redneck cashier. The manager fired him on the spot. I later learned in my teenage years that the flavor was that of very cheap beer. So to the creepy redneck who tried to get a nine-year-old boy drunk in Burger King, I'm glad you're fired. So this happened yesterday, but I'm pretty sure it's the creepiest encounter with a stranger I've ever had in my life. I've never really written about a personal experience like this and I don't know if you all will find it weird as I did or if I'm overreacting but I thought this would be the place to share it. Yesterday my friend and I were at my house and found ourselves craving gross fast food. I live about a half mile from a Burger King which my friends and I had walked to before. It was quickly approaching dusk but my neighborhood is relatively nice and I had never felt comfortable or unsafe walking anywhere nearby before. 
The weather has been mild around here for December, and we decided to walk instead of drive the short distance to the king. For some background information, my friend and I are both 16-year-old girls. We both have had encounters with creepers in the past, but my resting face has deterred a lot of unwanted advances. My friend had pepper spray canister in her purse, but we left it at home, I guess because we were so comfortable in my neighborhood that we didn't think anything odd would happen. When we reached the Burger King, it was oddly desolate for dinner time. The only people in the restaurant were the workers, an old Italian man who seemed to be the franchise owner, and a middle-aged African-American man sitting in the corner facing the window. The way the building is set up, you order your food around the corner from the seating area, and those at the cash register cannot easily see those seated in the restaurant. There's a side door that opens directly onto the dining area, and you can enter and leave without whoever is working the cash register seeing you. As we are ordering our milkshakes and fries, the owner was screaming at the young employees, which made my friend and I pretty uncomfortable. When our food was ready, he brought it to the counter and leered at us, asking us if we had just been to the beach. Neither of us were dressed particularly provocatively, and I just gave him a dirty look and sat down to eat my food, thinking that he was probably the creepiest person I was going to meet that day. When my friend and I sat down to eat, the man who was seated in the corner got up to leave. We barely looked at him, but when he was passing our table, my friend and I noticed an odd detail. Though he was middle-aged and was wearing what looked to be a work uniform, he had bright neon green contact lenses in his eyes, like the kind people wear with Halloween costumes. I giggled to my friend that he must have really liked Hobson, a rapper whose persona includes wearing white contact lenses, but we didn't find it too strange until he came back in the side door three minutes later. When he came back in, he was carrying a mishap in large bag. He was previously seated very far away from us, but when he came back, he took the seats closest to us, about two or three feet away. The tables were angled differently, so his back was facing us. We thought this was weird, but we continued eating while he pulled out an ancient laptop from his bag and started it up. A few moments later, my friend grabbed my leg and made a motion for me to look next to me. There, the man had clearly angled his laptop screen so it was in view of my friend and I. I heard his heavy breathing before I fully grasped what was happening. There, on his Windows Media Player screen, were two naked women in what seemed to be a dungeon, strapped down and being whipped by a third woman in a rubber suit. Now, I have grown up around computers and am friends with a lot of dirty teenage boys, and I have seen a lot of things before, but this didn't seem like anything normal. It seemed less staged and less professional, and the fact that the man had it on a disc instead of the internet made it pretty creepy. What made it even creepier was that he was steadily increasing the volume of his laptop. By the time my friend and I fully grasped what was happening and got up to leave, it was on full volume and still angled towards us while the woman's screams of pain echoed through the dingy restaurant. Of course, while this was happening, the manager was still yelling at his employees, and they were definitely unaware of what was going on. My friend and I didn't stop to tell them what was happening, and we booked it out of there, running across a busy intersection. I look back to see the man getting up and walking out of the Burger King, into what can only be described as a stereotypical black creeper van. I told my friend this, and we began to panic, and ran into a nearby gas station. The van drove into the parking lot and sat there, we hid inside for almost half an hour, and the employees probably thought we were shoplifting, but we were too scared to make the walk home with this weirdo on the loose. Eventually the van drove off and we peeked outside to make sure the coast was clear. By this time it was completely dark outside. I called my best guy friend and asked him to come pick us up, but he was across town. My friend and I just stayed on the phone with him as we began the trek back across to my house, which, though short, when paranoid seemed endless. When we got home, we speculated on the man's intentions and thanked our lucky stars that he didn't grab us on our walk back. I wasn't able to sleep well that night. I just saw his blank green eyes and his creepy black van in my dreams. It really sucks not feeling safe in your own neighborhood. I think it was probably exciting for him to scare young girls, and I think maybe this was his form of exhibitionism. If anything like this has ever happened to any of you, I would like to hear about it. Or if you know if it's a thing in the creeper community to force people to watch your weird stuff in public. I'm just really confused by this whole experience. 
My friend's dad called the non-emergency police line today about this, so I'll be sure to keep everyone updated. Number 15. Burger King Foot Lettuce When I was 18, I moved to St. Louis to go to college. I had never actually lived in a big city before, and even though I knew it could be very dangerous, I stupidly felt invincible as a young girl. One day, I decided I wanted to skip class and visit a trendy vintage store. I was always a little hesitant to go anywhere by myself, but the store was on a popular street full of shops and restaurants, and after all, it was broad daylight. I finished shopping and made the long walk back to my car, just enjoying the sights. The street wasn't as busy as usual since it was afternoon on a weekday, and this is how I suddenly ran into trouble. Strolling my way was a very tall black man dressed in army fatigues. On top of his bald head was a cardboard Burger King crown set at a jaunty angle. I wasn't exactly concerned except for the fact that he was clearly mumbling and laughing to himself as if he were telling the world's greatest jokes. It's not unusual to see strange looking but harmless people in public, so I continued on my way while being very careful not to make eye contact. Excuse me miss, could you show me the way to the library? I hadn't really expected him to talk to me and I was taken aback by his politeness. I replied that it was further down the way he was heading and started walking again and he got in front of me and asked me my name. Not really knowing what to do, I told him my first name and he told me his, reaching out his hand for a handshake. He gripped my hand and kept shaking it, never letting go while he told me how he was trying to get a job at a Burger King and asking me about my life. This entire time, he was still giggling to himself like he was about to be the victim of a prank. I didn't get the feeling that he was drunk or high, but he was definitely off mentally, and I was terrified that things were about to escalate. I gave vague but polite responses, nervously glancing around as he endlessly shook my hand. A man in a nearby store with narrowed eyes was watching this whole thing unfold through the window. I made eye contact as if to say, please help me. The guy didn't budge, and I was paranoid that it was about to be attacked right in front of him. It's so very nice to meet someone like you, the Burger King was saying, staring at me without blinking. His grip started to tighten harder and harder until he was crushing the bones in my palm, and I let out a little gasp. Suddenly, adrenaline kicked in, and I jerked my hand out of his and bolted, yelling, I really have to go now. I didn't stop to see if he was following me, and luckily... I never saw him again. I was mostly shaken up by what could have happened right in front of a bystander, and I still wonder about the Burger King's backstory. Why was he wearing legit army fatigues and boots and that crown? And I'll never be going to the local Burger King to find out if he got that job. I'm a 22-year-old female living in a semi-small city in California near Los Angeles. These events happened right after I graduated high school, making me about 17 years old at the time. After high school, I decided not to enroll in college right away since I wanted to take a break from school, so I started looking for a part-time job. I was actually hoping that I wouldn't find a job right away so I could focus on my art. With my luck, I got called for an interview at a local Burger King a few days after I started applying. I met my manager we'll call her Karen. She was extremely nice and hired me for the cashier position. This Burger King was very close to my house, a 10 minute walk from my house to be precise. It was great since at the time I didn't have a car nor a driving license. Everything was going great for a few months working at Burger King until I started to notice an Asian man. He was probably in his late 40s or early 50s. We have tons of customers daily so the only reason why he stood out was that he would come inside the restaurant wearing dark sunglasses and he would lift them just above his eyes when he would order, which I found funny at the time. He would always come in and just order a small vanilla shake and make small talk with me. At first, I didn't think anything of it. I just thought, wow, he must really like Burger King shakes since he comes here almost every day. Karen, my manager, was the first person to notice something was off with this man. Working at a fast food restaurant, my hours vary day to day. I might work opening shift or closing. Well, Karen was starting to get a weird feeling about this man, so at the end of my shift one day, she calls me into her office and lets me know that this man with sunglasses always asks for me when I'm not there and just leaves without ordering anything. 
This is when I started to pay more attention to him. I would always see his beat up Toyota van always parked in the parking lot when I would come out from my shift. It was parked on the side of the building where if you were inside the restaurant you wouldn't be able to see it from any of the windows. It made me uncomfortable since he would try to lure me by calling my name at times and at times he would sit in his van with a blank stare. I would always make sure he wasn't following me from work to my house. I didn't want him to know where I live, obviously. I found out that he works at the water shop that was just a few stores down so I relaxed a little since there was a legit reason as to why he was always parked in that area. The only weird thing was that he parked in our parking lot which was quite a walking distance from his shop. I just brushed it off thinking that he just wanted the exercise and he would call my name to say a friendly hello. Everything changed one day on my morning shift. I was working drive through since I was covering for my co-worker who was at lunch. He comes in and sits in the dining area. Although he was wearing the sunglasses, I can feel his piercing stare from across the restaurant. When my co-worker comes back from lunch, she takes over the drive through and I go back to working the front. As I'm walking to the register, I see him stand up and walk towards the register where I'm at. He comes up and asks me how my day was and how beautiful I look today and how he would just love to have a girlfriend like me that he can spoil. I got very disgusted and very uncomfortable but decided to ignore his comments and do the usual, Welcome to Burger King, how can I help you? He looked very taken aback and a little disturbed that I didn't acknowledge his previous comments. He just mumbled something under his breath in what sounded not English and said, Um, can I have a vanilla milkshake and the chance to take you out on a date? I'll wait for you until your shift is over and I can take you shopping if you'd like. It'll be great and you can get to know me. As he reaches to touch my arm, I felt the goosebumps running through the back of my neck. I was in shock and I took a few steps back. At this time, Karen steps in before he can finish and sends me to the back, in which I am happy to oblige. He gets extremely upset and yells, I'll be waiting for you. My manager tells him to get out or she will call the cops. Tears started running down my face and my manager lets me go home early. I call my mom to pick me up an hour after the incident since there was no way I was going to walk home after that. I knew what car this man drives and I've seen it multiple times. It was a gray old Toyota van with a distinctive bump in the front bumper. I wrote down his license plate. I saw it parked a few stores down as we were pulling out from the parking lot. Thoughts were flooding my mind, and the most important question was that if he knows where I live since I would walk to and from work, so he may have seen me. I had someone always take me to work and pick me up from work after that. Every time I would work with my manager, this man would come in and she would send me to the back where the cooks were and every time this would happen he would just walk out without buying anything. It was too much for me to handle so I decided to quit my job. I didn't want to see or hear his nasty comments. That wasn't the end of him though. My worst fear came into reality when I started receiving letters from this man a month after I quit my job. They would be typed letters with just a sentence, I miss you, I love you, or we belong together, or can I see you. My heart dropped. I knew it was him since in the bottom of it had his initials. He would pay with a debit card at BK so I knew his name. At this point I was more angry than upset. I called the cops but I was told that they couldn't do much since he hadn't actually done anything harmful but that they were going to send an officer to get a statement. I started documenting everything until I got enough evidence to obtain a restraining order on him. We moved out shortly after, and I haven't had anything else happen yet, thankfully. This happened when I was working at Burger King a few years back. I remember working the front counter that particular day and I had just taken my last few orders before my lunch break. One of these orders was for a seemingly kind older gentleman, gray hair, nicely combed, nice clothes and just generally looked like he cared about his appearance. For the sake of this, we'll just call him John. The order went well and I thought he was just really kind at the time. This kindness was welcome since working at any fast food customer service or retail job can be absolutely a terror. Sometime soon after his order, the man took his seat and I was going on break. I ordered my own lunch and sat down to wait for it in my usual favorite window seat with lots of sunlight. 
As I was messing around on my phone while waiting for my meal, I saw a movement out of my peripheral vision, so I tossed a glance to my left to see the man from before walk by. He looked at me with a smile and smiled back to be polite before going back to looking at my phone and waiting. The man must have walked by a total of four times and I thought maybe he was just getting a few things for his meal or using the bathroom. I wasn't really paying attention at the time because I was just buried in my phone waiting to eat. The fifth time the man walked by, he stopped at my table and looked at me. At this point, I just thought maybe that he had a question or a complaint and I already felt the dread of being bothered on my break by a customer. I looked his way and smiled, asking, Can I help you? In my nicest tone of voice, I prided myself in customer service and didn't want to make it seem like I was bothered despite feeling that way. The man smiles warmly at me and says, Sorry to bother you. You seem like you're on break. I just wanted to tell you how beautiful you are. I was taken a little by surprise by this comment. I've received compliments like this before from random people at times, but never an older man like him. Oh, thank you. It's really nice of you to say. I kept my cheery tone, but I couldn't help feeling a little creeped out. Keep in mind, at this time, I'm a 22-year-old girl, but I've always looked much younger than I am. Even now, a couple years later at 24, people tell me I look 17 or 18. I was prepared to get back to what I was doing, assuming that this was all he had to say, when he says, How old are you? You look like you're in high school. <laughs> he chuckles. I laugh a little nervously. Um, I'm actually 22, but I get that a lot, I explain. At this point, I just want this man to leave me alone because he's really creeping me out and I just want to enjoy my break alone. Really? That's even better, he says cheerfully. Have you ever dated an older man before? He asks me. I'm so nervous at this point and when I get nervous, I'm grossly nice because I don't want to escalate the situation. No, not really, I answered. Truthfully, I had dated one or two older men before, and I don't see a problem with that kind of age difference as long as both parties are consenting adults, but I didn't want to tell him that. Oh, really? Well, would you ever consider dating an older man? I'm sorry if these are personal questions, but you're just so beautiful and I would love the chance to date you if you'll have me. He has an expecting look on his face, and I can see out of the corner of my eye some of my coworkers and managers glancing at me every now and then. I think they could tell that something weird was going on, or maybe they just assumed that the man was complaining or asking me something having to do with the store. I'm not really looking to date right now. I'm sorry. I said as politely as possible. This part was actually the truth because I had just gotten out of a relationship around this time and I didn't want to jump into a new one. I watched his expression change from cheerful to disappointed, but he didn't give up. I understand. Here, I'll give you my number if you change your mind and when you're ready to date. He presented me with his receipt with a phone number scratched on in pen, as if he was already expecting to give it to me beforehand. I gingerly took the receipt and smiled awkwardly. Oh, okay, thank you. I'll consider it. I tried sounding nice, but I had no intention of contacting this guy. His smile returned, and the last thing he said was, I'll be waiting for your call, beautiful. He winked at me before leaving my table, and then eventually leaving the store. When he was finally gone, my manager came to my table and asked what the guy wanted, and I told her what had happened. She grimaced and commented about how creepy it was, especially when he initially thought I was in high school. I agreed finished out my break, and threw away the receipt with his phone number on it with the rest of the trash on my tray. I never saw that man again while working at Burger King, and I'm definitely glad I didn't. So John, the creepy man at Burger King with a liking for high school girls, you know the rest. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r Let's Read Official, and give and receive feedback from the community, and maybe even hear your story featured on the next video. And join my Discord to interact with me and other listeners directly. And if you want to support me even more, 
Grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt. And check out the Let's Read podcast, where you can hear all these stories in long compilation form and save huge on data. Located anywhere you listen to podcasts. Links in the bio. Thanks so much, friends. And remember, always finish your fatty, meaty goodness.